Fright Night. If you love being scared, this could be the night of your Welcome life. Welcome back to another episode of Blood and Brews. Tonight, I'm being joined by my special guest, Mike, from Video Creep Reviews. Me. And That's tonight, me. we're... <laughs> Tonight we're going to discuss the 1985 horror classic, Fright Night. Fuck yeah. So exciting. So, so exciting. When's the last time you've seen this? Dude, semi, semi recently. Like, whenever Anton died, I did like a little double up action. Which, as I'm saying that, I'm realizing now that that's not. That, that he, he's been dead a while now. He, he died a few years ago. <laughs> so I guess it's been a it's while. Been, <laughs> it's been a minute. Uh, so what are you drinking tonight? Uh, water. <laughs> I'm drinking water. I've been water. vastly dehydrated. Like I, I, you know, when you're like pissed, just tells on you. It's one of those. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was pissing in front of my partner the other day, and she was like, "Fucking, you need, you need water." So I'm just doing the water <laughs> thing right now. <laughs> okay, okay. Tonight I'm drinking, um, get dead. It's an American lager from. Pattern Brewing or Original Pattern Brewing. It's a 4.6% alcohol by volume. And yeah, it's pretty tasty. It's a pretty clear. You can see straight through it. That actually kind of looks like what my pee looks like right now, to be honest. That's what I'm trying. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying <laughs> I'm to get trying to this. To get <laughs> That's this shade I'm... looks about right, like a good health wise. That looks like a good shade. Yeah, like you bring that to your doctor and they're like, oh, dude, you're killing it. You're doing great. You're set. <laughs> All right. So Fright Night is a rated R horror comedy running one hour and 46 minutes. Written and directed by Tom Holland, starring Chris Sarandon, Roddy McDowell, William Ragsdale, Amanda Bierce, and Stephen Jeffries. Yeah, I need I, uh, a sip after reading all those because <laughs> I'm telling you, sometimes that's what gets me when I'm doing a video, like just all the names and trying to pronounce them correctly. <laughs> that for me is like the roughest. I like fuck up so many names. Anyways. No, I'm the same way. I it, like throw me like a random Y in a and like early in a name or something and just watch me fold like a chair. Like I, I am the worst <laughs> at pronouncing names. The worst. You know, I, I rewatched this like to, to just get in the mindset for this and shit. And uh, you know what I came to the realization of, which I'm sure I'm going to be so late to this party. But I did not realize that Amy was was Marcy Darcy from. Oh, yeah. From the Children. I had no idea. Exactly. I was I was and watching it and I was like, you know who that looks like? And it was exactly who I thought it was. So I nailed it. But like, I, I should have known that already. Well, what was crazy was she was such a different character in Married with Children. Like, you hated her, right? And in this one, you're kind of like, oh, she's, you almost feel so sorry for her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, towards the end of the movie, she's not, <laughs> she's not as sympathetic. <laughs> she little, she takes hard. a whole nother turn and becomes a whole nother woman once, oh, yeah. she, once uh, he gets a hold of her. Chris but, Randall. like, literally. Like when she has like the long hair, she's like kind of like unrecognizable. It doesn't even look like her. I know in that's like a lot fire. of hair, but like she looks different, different. Like when oh, she yeah. comes down the stairs for the first time and you like see her, it's like, oh yeah, hey, okay, I'll, I have to believe that that's the same actress. Well, what when they when I was watching the making of, I guess they like gave her like a bigger breasts and they gave her longer hair and they did like a bunch of stuff to like make her have her like vampire form or what have you i wonder if there was any insecurity behind the scenes on her end she was like putting on like the chest part and she was like okay no they want bigger that's fine i don't have bigger <laughs> yes i'm what gonna do, this. do i'm gonna yeah no, some more tickets yeah you know i'm a character this isn't me <laughs> welcome to fright night The film follows a teenager, Charlie Brewster, as he finds out his neighbor might possibly be a vampire. And my thought or question for you is, if you thought your new neighbor 
was a vampire, what would you do? Bathe in holy water and drink garlic juice? B, sneak over and try to kill the creature? Or C, convince him to turn you into a vampire? Ah, oh, man. None of these sound particularly... All, all three of these are major life changes. <laughs> like I am, I'm completely doing like I'm now I'm drinking garlic juice and shit or fucking I'm a vampire. <laughs> what was the second one? I'm like sneaking into his house. I'm a criminal. You're going <laughs> to sneak in there and try to kill him. Kill him. Uh, I don't know if I'd go any of those routes, man. I, I think I'd. OK, if, it really depends on how he's acting, man. Like if he's just a well to do vampire and he's not really fucking with me or my family or anything more power to you man go go do your <laughs> vampire shit uh if you were a bit more of a threat to me i think i'd try and move i would relocate i wouldn't want to be around it you know it's 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 not what you do it's who you're with kind of thing and if i'm if, understandable. understandable yeah i just i don't want to do it i don't want to deal with it i'd, I'd rather <laughs> like someone else be the neighbor i don't want to do it if i had to hard right. choose right. between those three though You'd have to catch me on a Tuesday where I feel like a Billy badass, you know, and I'd be like, oh, what? Fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm handling this in house. You know, I'm going to fucking I'm just going to take care of the vampire because I'm not moving. That, that, I'd have to be in a particular mood. OK. Would you befriend Evil Ed in real life? Or is he too fucking strange and different? Absolutely not. I don't even know how Charlie is like friends with Evil Ed. What an annoying son of a bitch. Like at the, you know how like when you first meet his character in the beginning of the movie, there's he's like all fucking up. He's like on Charlie's balls because he like flunks us like surprise test and shit. He does this little thing where he like, oh, did I freeze? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, like the in the beginning of the movie, there's like this scene where he finds out that like Charlie flunked up a uh, like surprise test and shit, and he does this little move where he like kind of jabs his finger into charlie's like rib cage there i would not be friends with anyone who had the inclination to do that to me absolutely not i would not be friends with with evil ed no fuck that my cousin used to do that shit to me all the time it pissed me off so much so it's i not understand a good feeling. it's not a good move <laughs> it's not a good move and then like the whole time he's weirdly antagonistic like i wouldn't trust him if amy was my girl and they were alone together and shit like I I would I'd take issue with the fact that him and Amy went to go see Peter Vincent. I'd be like, well, what the fuck are you doing hanging out with him in the first place? You know he's odd. No, I would not be exactly. friends him. What about you? Would you would you be friends with Ed? It would be one of those friendships where you just kind of at a distance, you know what I mean? But you kind of held them at, at arm's length, like, mm, but you're not coming into the inner circle type of thing. Right. Right. Like he I'll, stays I'll, at work or at school or wherever he's at. That's where he stays, and just you know, just a polite. Right, like That's if we're it. all drinking at Seven Eleven, uh, you can drink at the Seven Eleven with us, but like, you're not coming to the wedding. Like, are, are you nuts? <laughs> That's not That's exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the vibe. I, I give you. Okay, so practical effects from the '80s. How do you think they hold up in this film? And. What's your opinion of the overuse of CGI in horror films over the years? Uh, I think it stands up incredibly well. Like some of the scenes in this are just one. Like, don't get me wrong. There's a couple hokey moments. Like when you see Amy's like fucking teeth reveal, like it's so blatantly a prosthetic. It's so blatantly fake, but it's not so ugly or shittily done that you're, it takes you out of it in any capacity at all. I still think it looks really, really good. I still think a lot of the effects in this look 10 out of 10. Like, it just has that feel. It has that that look. CGI, there's certain things that I think, like, I feel like in the horror community, we shit on CGI so much, but sometimes CGI is fucking badass sometimes, you know, if it's, if it's for the right things. Do I want to see, like, CGI gremlins? No. <laughs> you got, I want those to be puppets. Keep some shit practical. I never want to see a CGI Chucky. 
I just never want to see it. But if you got some new bastard who looks awesome in CGI, by all means, CGI it up. 100% agree. I think that there's there's a time and a place for CGI. And I think the combination of the two is really good. Mm-hmm. But when you lean too heavy on the CGI, it can kind of take you back out. Like you're trying to get lost in these movies, right? I mean, that's how I feel when I go into a horror movie. I'm like, I want to get lost in it. And I know every once in a while, the CGI can like kick me back out. Like I'll be like fully committed. And then all of a sudden something happens that just like throws me off. I'm like, oh, it had me up until right, right then, you know? So that's my, that's my thing. That's a super interesting point to bring up about CGI where like, it's funny because CGI is, meant to to bridge the gap between reality and disbelief right so it's like oh man this cgi is it's it's taking me there it's doing the thing but if cgi is just like the tiniest bit fucked up it completely takes you out whereas like a practical effect the entire time you're aware that it is fake but it doesn't take you out because there's just this consistency thing with it Uh, that's interesting i've never thought about it in that realm and you definitely bridge that in my mind so if you had to choose a favorite scene out of this film or a, uh, one that like sticks out in your mind, I'm hoping it's not the same one that I have that's stuck in my mind from this film, but what would it be? Uh, ugh, there's, there's two, there's two. When, like, when I think of this movie, like the, the prominent scene that always sticks out to me, is the <laughs> that was a wonderful little hat trick <laughs> that you did there, <laughs> man? Um, yeah, no, the, the prominent fucking thing that like the first scene is always like Amy trying to fucking like they get into a whole thing where he's like, dude, I I want to smash, I want to smash so bad, like fucking we've been together for a while now, you don't even let me look at your tits, and then she's like, you know what, you're right. I'm down. Let's go. She gets on the bed. She's like fucking like, you know, <laughs> it's time to lose my virginity. That's a huge moment for a, a human being. Like, this is it. Charlie, you're the guy. I'm give it to you. And then he finally convinces her and she's like ready and down and consent is in the room. And he's looking out the window at his like neighbor and shit like that. Just that'll never not be a thing that bugs me about Charlie's character. Like it, you go get the vagina that you just worked so hard on. Why, why would you just leave it there? So there's exactly. that thing. And then the other one is always Evil Ed going to see Peter after he's been turned. Like, that is just a, a wonderful little antagonistic scene. Completely agree. And the, the teeth thing was kind of that, like, because I just rewatched it recently, and his teeth were kind of sticking out, and especially after he, like, presses it to his head, mm-hmm. you know? like his teeth are super exaggerated but uh-huh. for the time period and everything and the fact that it was practical it was like i gave it a pass and it still like looked kind of good to me yeah no same same i i again like at no point are you looking at those over exaggerated teeth and being like holy shit how how they got his teeth to do that like you know what's going on you're not dense you know but you you totally are in it with it yeah for sure Okay. Um, on the gore scale. Okay. What would you give this film, blood like bloody wise? Like, I want I want to let you score it first and tell me what you think, and then I just want to see if we like agree because I already have one like pre picked in my brain. Now, if okay. you need help seeing what this actually says, no, I I see it. I'm there. And uh, I got to say, the upper levels is not where I'm looking. (laughs) It's it's certainly not a slaughterhouse or grizzly. It's not savage. Bloody feels like I'm getting close. I'm playing a game of hot and cold as I go down. And honestly, I'm I'm fucking, I think I'm at blood. Just blood. Or what's that say next to it? Bloodthirst? It's bloodthirsty. I think I was like, like like that. That's the one. Same bloodthirsty. Yeah, because it's like yeah, we're not seeing like arms being ripped off and blood flying everywhere. The 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 presence of fucking problem 
is is ever present but like it's not it's it's not a bloodbath by any means it felt like with the the things going on throughout the film like they could have thrown a lot more blood into it and there were some scenes where it had some decent weird stuff going on but yeah i agree 100 percent. it is bloodthirsty now my favorite scene i wanted to go back to that really quick and the one that creeped me out the most from this flick was the evil Ed wolf scene where he gets stabbed through the chest and then transformed from a wolf oh, yeah. to human. And to me, that's the one that stuck out in my head because it's so like eerie and creepy. And he's like looking at Peter Vincent with those like yellow, yellowish golden eyes. And he's like reaching out for him like for help and he's just like transforming back into evil ed and it's just like Like, it got me. Like, that's the one. Because I watched this as a kid, right? So, to me, that scene has always, like, messed with my head. And I feel like it was... I mean, for practical effects, it looked really amazing. Oh, yeah. There, there's, like, levels of practical effects to that thing. Where it's not just, like, what you're seeing. It's, like, the green oozing, dripping out. And then, like, the... get the skull like turning it like the wolf turning into the skull then into the like there's so much that went into that specific scene it's a total standout and it's great it doesn't make it savage or you know like a grizzly no no, not at all but there's still (laughs) something really fun about it like you that's it's hard to not stare like there's there's a there's a master craft work Um, what would you score this film one to ten? Um, well, I would say of all time, I would say this is one of the greatest vampire films ever made. Like that, I mean, I I might be alone in that opinion, others might agree, but for me personally, I think this is such a fantastic and fun vampire film. Like it just works in so many different levels. The things that I want from vampires i get a shit ton of in this so for me this movie ranks at like a strong eight you know i'm you're hitting right at the same place i would be voting for this i was gonna say eight and a half um it's like right there like i want to give it that but i want to leave space for the other films that like i hold in higher regard right like right so like, I would place um, Lost Boys above this movie. But that does not mean that this movie sucks and this movie is awesome. Oh, they're, both, exactly. uh, they're both on that side of the road where it's like, we're all kind of doing a good job, you know? Okay, so with that being said, where does this film place in your top five vampire flicks of all time? Ooh, we're asking I, the hard questions here. Um, <laughs> uh of all time vampire flicks honestly i think it would rank at like a three or even like a two like i think i think lost boys is the pinnacle of vampire films like it just it has everything that you need for a really like mm, that was delicious like vampire film um so it's hard to to put a lot of space between that one and this one So out of five, I I would place this at like a two. All right. All right. Um, Are you a fan of any of the remakes or sequels or what was it? I thought that they did some other type of spinoff thing for it too. Or is that it? But did you like the, the sequel to it? So funny enough, when I was watching this, I was doing the whole, cause like, all right, like, Chris Sarandon for me will always be Mike Norris from Child's Play. Like that is 
my first exposure to him that is just the character I see when I see that actor. Um, so, sorry, I, I fucking, <laughs> I, I totally Wrong. like spaced on the question again. Oh, okay. So, are you a fan of any of like the sequels or the like the remakes to this this movie? That's right. That's right. So, um, that's what I was saying. Was like I, uh, like I, I always look at Sarandon as like that character and shit. So I found myself when I was rewatching this, thinking like, you know, there's a sequel to this that I've never seen, and I was wondering if like Chris, if he was in that as well and shit. Only to find out that like pretty much more than half of the cast comes back and shit like charlie's in it fucking marcy darcy's in it like peter like it's it's a really solid thing so i haven't seen it at current standing but i have strong ambitions to watch it now especially because now part one is so fresh in my head um as for the remake i was a firm stand on that like i really enjoyed the remake i had a good time with it i didn't understand all the like fucking flack that it got in the horror community i always really enjoyed it and to this day i enjoy it. i like mclovin as evil ed and shit all in feral <laughs> like it, i thought everyone did a really really good job in the remake. i can i agree with you on the uh, remake i really liked it especially the ending scene mm. the where they were underground and yeah. how he like prepares for it and shit i just that like got me and like so i was sold at that point right it at first like the whole build up i was like ah, i don't know and then that was like i yeah. felt like it ended strong for me like really yeah. strong i actually really liked that one and agreed with i don't understand why so many people didn't like it or so many people want to hate on something because it's not the original you know it's like right. i like how they like threw their own twist into it I uh I I straight up couldn't remember this this little factoid about the remake. So I'd love for you to fill in the blank. In the remake, instead of Colin Farrell going after his girlfriend, he goes after the mother, right? Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a good call. <laughs> I thought that was a good call. It's it's hard to if there was one glaring thing about Bright Night, it's the fact that like this this vampire is is preying on a high school girl that's the one thing that's like okay maybe maybe we can move some things around and shit so i i think <laughs> the, the remake did a good job on that aspect of it because they like kind of and shit she's like all naked in this movie and shit like it, they did not care i think that i mean i get the whole because they're trying to like take it from dracula right because dracula falls in, in love with his wife because she looks like his ex, right? And right. Bram Stoker's. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're doing it. I get that. But the same, I agree with you where it's like him going after a teenager when he's like in his whatever's. That just looks bad and creepy. Yeah. So let's not take it to that level. Nice little um, Sometimes when they change things, it's a good thing. <laughs> exactly. But you know what's weird? Okay. I, I watched this movie and that is barely a thing that bugs me. Like uh like Chris Sarandon and Marcy Darcy, like that it isn't something that crosses my mind so much that it's like I can't watch the film or it's you know, like uh, awful to me. But you know, it, it comes up. It comes up. I think that it's because uh what is it? Um what is his name? William Ragsdale and Amanda Bierce, they don't look like they're teenagers. They kind of look older Not than teenagers all. to me. So, like, it's a little bit easier to, like, let that like, glaze over or whatnot just because you're just like, eh. yeah. She and dresses actually... like a 14-year-old, but she's got the face of a 14-year-old. <laughs> I agree. Hard to, hard to miss. Oh. <sighs> All right, so if you liked this film and you wanted another film that was similar or like it or kind of fit in the same, like, feel of it, tonality-wise, like, what would you recommend to people out here watching this, like, that, that could go out and watch another film similar to Fright Night? 
ooh, are you giving me like a like a double feature DVD job? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> That's a good. I like the way you put it. Yes, I I would fucking double feature this with uh, Night of the Creeps. I feel like Night of the Creeps in this movie have a very similar energy. And if it was a triple pack, I'll put Monster Squad. That's like that's oh, I, just. <laughs> I was gonna say Monster Squad. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just got the vibe. Like there's there's a certain mm, thing about it, you know. Like I feel like Demon. It... Oh, let's go for it. No, it's, it it has this weird safe feeling to it, even though it does have nudity. It does have some like racy shit going on in it like sexual stuff and like just the the gore and everything like you wouldn't want a kid seeing it obviously but there is this safe feeling kind of throughout it that like i don't know it kind of feels like a family friendly movie even if it might not be right it's it's a great maybe your kid is not like maybe your kid's not like eight. maybe your kid's like 12 maybe he's like 13 where it's like he knows what tits are he could watch this <laughs> exactly it's, it's one of those you know it's only one scene can roll up you know <laughs> one of those <laughs> but it, it, this, that's the thing about fright night though like it pairs with so many good movies like it i would pair this with fucking uh, american werewolf in london like it, it, there's so many movies that it pairs well with. but if i had to do one movie i would choose night of the Creeps. all right wrapping things up here what is the movie that you're looking forward to mostly that's coming out in the next whatever i have a feeling i know what it is but it's it's gonna be evil dead rise i'm watching it tomorrow i cannot wait cannot wait and then uh i'm kind of like feeling it out like i might do like a little double feature and catch renfield too just keep the vampire going and shit like but but evil dead rise is like an absolute Oh, yeah, that movie looks so good. And after hearing so much about it and already, like you've heard so many of reviews and like people that have already gone and seen it and Just even the Rotten pissing Tomatoes. Me off, by the way. Pissing me yeah. right off how many people have seen this movie already. Oh, we can't I know, it. right? Like, oh, where, where are they how seeing this it? Happen? Like, get how, it. <laughs> yeah, how do you get in there? What about all the people that have like the the boxes with all the shit in it, like that are getting like the special box? I'm like, how the hell do you get that? I want it. <laughs> I want it too. Give me... I want that shit. Give me the like. <laughs> Who's Anyways. doing this? No, and no I'm one's looking... answering because I've asked like, hey, I just see it and shit, and no one's. It's like a dirty little secret. No one wants yeah. to share. Well, um. Thank you for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Dude, thank um, you for having me on, man. No problem. Uh, hopefully, plan on doing this again in the again future, in the if you would. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I like doing, like, kind of like maybe 80s, 90s, maybe a little bit older than that. And just trying to dredge up the older films and throw them back into the mix and see, like, you know. We can yeah, try no, to I, get people watching them again, you know? As you should. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> They're not going anywhere. You might as well make your peace with them. Get to know them. I it's weird like the practice now. Have you like have you spoken to a lot of like the younger YouTubers who like cover fucking horror and shit? They seem to have like a weird disdain for older horror films. And I don't know I, why. I feel like there's a whole new movement towards the movie having like a deeper meaning instead of the movie just being like, you're just going into it just to enjoy it just for the ride of like enjoying it. Like, and people want to break it down so much and like, it has all this deep meaning and it does all these things. I'm like, dude, I just want to enjoy the film and let go for a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I which fucking, there's nothing wrong with a movie having some kind of like deeper thing. Like I, you know, not at all. Do that. Do that. But they always have to do that. And I think you see a lot of movies now that like they lean so far into that it's not even horror anymore. It's just like a thriller, which is enjoyable. But like if you're a horror fan, you fucking you want horror. So exactly. maybe reel that in. Maybe reel it in. <laughs> I completely agree. All right, man. Well, thanks again. 
and I appreciate you coming on. Oh, yeah, man. Thank this, you for having me. This has been um, my guest, Video Creep, and he does his own, he has his own YouTube channel. It's Video Creep Reviews on YouTube, so make sure to go check that out. I'll also drop a link down below. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a good night.